resource-based economies, are a new type of social system unlike any that has come before it. It is a system of free access that would allow people to access goods and services free of menial labour, debt, barter or trade. And this is made possible through various social and technological means. Resource-based economies involve the application of the scientific method for social and human concern in order to arrive at decisions instead of making them. Today, we face three main challenges. A vastly uneven distribution of material wealth, the degradation of the world's ecology, and the rise of automation and artificial intelligence. Resource-based economies directly address these key issues. There is an abundance online of brief summaries and descriptions about what resource-based economies are, much like the one I just gave. But to my knowledge, no one has actually gone into elaborate detail about the fundamental concepts of resource-based economies. That is, until now. Greetings, and welcome to my first instalment of 2019. From the start of the year, I had to delay making videos for a while for personal reasons. However, now I'm back with a new series titled The Fundamentals of RBEs. In this series, we will talk about the different parts of a resource-based economy and how they would work. We will address some criticisms of these concepts, as well as look at what material conditions make these things possible. So then, what are some basic concepts we have to talk about when looking at what comprises a resource-based economy? The first thing we have to discuss is how the economy of this system functions. Monetary market economics wouldn't be used in a resource-based economy. In its absence, different methods would be used for economic calculation and for conducting economic life. I, and I'm sure many other RBE proponents, advocate for a mix of digital, decentralised economic planning and gift economics. These would take the form of a resource management system and a collaborative commons. Secondly, we need to discuss how we can optimise the distribution of goods and services so that such is equitable and sustainable. Here, we will cover the concept of access over ownership, where people are able to access and use the things they need without exactly owning them. In order for goods and services to be accessed freely and equitably, they also need to be readily available. Producing things and distributing them closer to home rather than further afield would greatly improve efficiency and sustainability. And therefore something we will also discuss in this series is the concept of localization. One of the primary goals of a resource-based economy is the reduction of scarcity as well as ensuring the efficient and sustainable use of our natural resources. Here, it seems it would be apt to bring ideas like the circular economy into the equation. The concept of open source isn't a new thing. It's something that's been practiced for a few decades now, mostly centering around open source software. Today, the emergence of technologies such as 3D printing allow the concept of open source to expand into the physical realm. Incorporating this concept into the framework of an RBE is something we can definitely look at, as well as the potential for a so-called free marketplace of ideas. A big part of transitioning into a resource-based economy is the complete overhaul and redesign of our architecture and infrastructure. City systems and living spaces will be designed very differently in a resource-based economy. This is something I will go over later on in the series. What sets apart resource-based economies from dictatorships, democracies, capitalism, communism, anarchism, or any other type of system is its application of the scientific method for social concern. Organised religion, profit-seeking enterprise, and systems of law have proven themselves ineffective as vehicles for human progress. On the other hand, science has been the greatest catalyst for innovation and the cultivation of knowledge. Politics, faith and business have only given us false and broken promises. Through the scientific method, however, we have discovered fire, flight, medicine, space travel and so many other things. You can't legislate away a problem. It just doesn't work. Instead, workable solutions need to be implemented using the scientific method. When you strip a socio-economic system down to its bare-bones mechanical state, it then becomes possible to analyse the core mechanisms of said system and the results they generate. A social system 
can be analysed for how efficient it is at managing resources, for how sustainable it is in the long term, how it performs in terms of promoting public health and well-being, among many other factors. After testing for these things, we can then look at creating viable solutions for any apparent problem. An example of a social problem that we could solve using the scientific method is drunk driving and traffic accidents. By law, it is illegal to drive under the influence of alcohol or narcotics. Yet, on a wide scale, people still do this. And therefore, we can say that previous measures against this have been ineffective. From there, we can look at what alternative solutions might be more effective at tackling the issue. In this case, perhaps we could invest more resources into self-driving automobiles and public transport. We will know if these solutions are effective if we see a great reduction in traffic accidents and traffic-related deaths. This method of using science to arrive at decisions and solutions, rather than making them, can be applied to a wide range of issues, however big or small. From smaller things like finding the most nutritious diet, to global issues like tackling poverty and addressing the emergent climate crisis. When the scientific method is applied to social concern, issues can be addressed quickly and directly, without any form of tyranny, dogma or bureaucracy. Instead of enacting legislation in order to solve problems, or hoping markets will somehow fix things, resource-based economies offer a pragmatic and scientific solutions-based approach that will prove much more effective. And with a highly educated population, we will eventually be able to decentralise this process and create a competent democratic consensus. This video is a bit shorter than usual, as it is merely an introduction to my new series. In my next video, we will be discussing resource management systems, how they might work, and where they might be implemented and used in a resource-based economy. For now though, this is all from me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content and help out this channel, then click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Sharing these videos on social media helps the channel grow and also helps raise awareness of ideas such as resource-based economies. For now though, I've been Adam Jones, this is me signing off and I'll see you in the next one.